good evening, good day, or good afternoon, whatever time of day it is for you. Hi, how are you? So today, it is a little chilly, hence the jacket. We are doing another book look series, and in case you are unaware of what that is on my channel, the book look series is where we go through all the books in my library, most of them my childhood ones, and we talk about what the book is about while creating an eye look based on the colors on the cover, thereby combining two of some of my favorite things, literature and makeup. So in case you didn't catch it when I lifted it up, this is the book that we are going to be talking about today. This is called A Little Princess by Frances Hogson Burnett. Before I forget, please don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, and click that notification bell if you'd like a notification for an I upload a video. I am getting into my eyeshadow primer, and if you have been with my channel for as long as it's been around, you will know that for the length of my channel, which has been like two, three months now, I have only been using the Urban Decay eyeshadow primer potion in the shade Original. Now, I'm going to have to give you all a little disclaimer. My room is in the center of the house where everyone likes to play and do everything and be very loud. And there's a lot of people here, so in case you hear noises, I am sorry. Now, the colors on this cover are light pink, darker pink, light blue, light yellow, and there's a whole lot of colors in this little oval right here and it's a little hard for me to try and focus on one and make a look out of that so I'm just gonna say it's brown and we're gonna do brown. <laughs> I'm going into my Colourpop Candyland palette. I have not used this in a long time. I'm going into the shade Candyland because it is the palest pink that I have in my collection. So a Little Princess is a very, it's an old story, and it's very similar to Cinderella in many ways. It's, you know, it's about this little girl, and she grows up in India when it was a colony of England. That barely showed up anywhere. Oh no. It's like for a second there I forgot why I don't use this palette. It's because none of the colors show up. <laughs> That's okay. It's almost like there's nothing there. I will start over and do a different concept. Okay, change of plans, you guys. That's barely even there anymore, so it doesn't really matter that I put that there. I'm gonna do the yellow instead in that area. Going into the ColourPop Little Ray of Sunshine palette. So back to what I was saying about the book. This little girl, Sarah, is sent to a, like a boarding school in London. There we go. And it's a nice boarding school and her father is very rich. So he pays the headmistress of the boarding school to give her preferential treatment. And the headmistress of the boarding school does so and she acts all kind to Sarah the whole time but actually, secretly, she's very jealous of her and hates her. Sarah gets her own room, her own handmaiden, new clothes, her own carriage and a pony. And you'd think that Sarah would be some sort of spoiled brat because she gets all of this. But no, in fact, she's not. She's very kind and actually ends up getting the name Little Princess, like the nickname at the school. And then, I believe it's after her birthday, they find out that her father died. Not only did he die, but he died penniless because he put all his money into a bad investment of a diamond mine. And there's all of this debt to pay to the school for the pony and the carriage and taking care of her and no one to pay for it. So the headmistress is very cruel and makes Sarah work for it. Sarah becomes a little worker and she's abused. She is not given enough food to eat. She's given clothes that are way too short on her. She's cold all the time. She has to work all the time. She, pretty much everything's taken away from her. 
and all she has left is a little doll and her imagination, and she still pretends that she is a princess dressed as a servant to help her get through the day. And there are a bunch of other things that happen. She finds a penny or some sort of coin on the ground and uses it to go buy food because she's, you know, she's starving. But she sees a starving homeless girl out in the cold and gives it to her instead. And the baker lady of the place wanted to go reward Sarah, but Sarah left because she had to get back to work. So instead of rewarding Sarah, she took in the homeless girl in to her care, took care of her instead. I'm now going into the Juvia's Place Sweet Pinks for that darker pink. For the, for the darker pink lettering right there, I know that that does not match that color there, but I'm having a hard time finding a color in my collection that matches it. So Sarah returns back to the school. Hey everyone, this is Editing Daniela. So there was a moment of film where I talked about how the father of Sarah had two friends, an Indian man and then another Englishman, and I think the Englishman's name was Crawford, and I think the English, the Indian man's name was Ram, but I don't remember exactly. Point being, I, for some reason, the audio, the video just decided to quit on me when I was filming that and talked about how there were two friends that showed up to the school. So I'm sorry about that. Letting you know that now. Two of the father's friends, the dead father, show up and they both get sick. And I'm forgetting their names, but the one from India dies and the one who isn't from India lives. And then it turns out that that diamond mine investment that everyone thought was bad and failed hadn't in fact failed it actually just started picking up and he was rich now but he was so ridden with guilt from the fact that his friend died his other friend died and now he had all this money now this now rich friend of the father's because he feels so guilty knows that the father had a daughter and is determined to find her and give her the money but he thinks that she's in school in France even though she's not she's at the school that he's at there's another Indian friend, a lot of people here, forgetting all their names, I'm trying to remember, who is at the school. And he ends up befriending Sarah because his pet monkey, yes, goes into her attic and they become friends. The attic is where she sleeps, by the way. Now, I just want to say... <laughs> Not all of these details may be correct because it's been a long time since I've read this book. Again with, oh wait, no, I'm going to deepen that up. With a lot of the books so far that I've told you guys about, there are children's stories that I've read. I mean, this book is like rated nine and up. <laughs> so it's been a while since I've read it. Indian friend, I think his name is Ram. What was his name? What was the rich friend's name? Crawford? Sure. Crawford comes back to Rom, the friend with the monkey. <laughs> and Rom tells Crawford about how there's this poor girl living in the attic with no food, not enough clothes. It's freezing. And Crawford feels bad, so they give her food, 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 clothes, things like that, and then when she's asleep, they leave her little presents like dolls and things to help cheer her up. What's kind of funny is this whole time, Rom and Crawford don't know that she's the daughter that they're trying to give the money to, and Sarah doesn't know that these men are the ones giving her the nice things. So she's just out here thinking she's got a secret benefactor somewhere. <laughs> oh, Sarah. So Crawford sends Sarah some dresses and it makes the headmistress nervous because she thinks that she has a new suitor or wealthy benefactor or something, so she starts treating her nice again. The headmistress is not a nice person. So once again, the monkey goes into Sarah's room. Oh wait, do you guys want me to spoil this? <laughs> once again, the monkey goes into Sarah's room. I am now going into my NYX... Love You So Mochi highlighter palette 
for the very light pink right there. Monkey goes into Sarah's room. Sarah takes the monkey back to Crawford's house the next day. And somehow they get to talking about how Sarah's been to India before. And then somehow they find out, well, he, he Crawford, finds out that Sarah is the daughter of that friend that he's been looking for. And right then is when the headmistress comes in all angry and is like, Sarah, it's time to go back to work. Nah, nah, nah. Crawford says, no, I'm taking Sarah into my care now. I'm adopting her, whatever, because she's the rich daughter now. And the headmistress is like, oh, come back to my school and be the star pupil and blah, 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 blah. And Sarah says no, because obviously she was treated horribly there. So then the headmistress tries to blackmail her or something by saying, you won't ever get to see your friends again if you don't come back to the school. Crawford gets mad and says, you can't do that. I think they arrest her. It all ends happily ever after. Sarah, uh, the headmistress goes home angrily. Sarah lives with Crawford. She goes back and finds one of her friends who is also mistreated and takes her home as her handmaiden. And then she ends up going, oh no, Crawford is like all good now. I guess he, was he sick? Anyways, they're happy. Sarah goes back to the bakery to give money to them. Check on the homeless girl. I'm not sure what it was. And finds out that the homeless girl is now the baker's assistant, is doing all well, and everything's happily ever after. The end. I just realized that I, that I focused so much on describing to you guys the plot line that I miraculously remember that I neglected to do my makeup. So this is a book that has actually been transformed into a movie and a play, I believe. Also, I put on my e.l.f. poreless putty primer and dotted some of my pretty fresh hyaluronic acid tinted moisturizer on my face to go for a more natural look. And I'm just gonna like tap it out. I'm not going full glam today. Always make sure you have clean fingers before you do this, by the way. What is, is that an eye boogie? So yeah, so that was a book that was popularized for a long time, especially with children's stories. And my mom was really big about that book. I have like two or three different versions of that book in my room, or in my library, actually. So I just covered up any red spots and the dark circles a little bit with something that's close to my skin tone instead of something lighter because when you do something lighter it actually highlights it and brings your eyes closer to it and look at it more than if it just blends in a little bit more than usual with your skin tone. Going into my Milani Silky Matte Bronzer. Anyways, I enjoy the book as a kid trying to remember it now it reminds me of some of the charles dickens books that i had to read like great expectations and stuff like that where they just have a mysterious benefactor <laughs> or they used to be rich and all of a sudden they're poor and they've been mistreated and i believe it came from that era so i'm not surprised i'm just taking any excess blush that i have on this brush and using it on my cheeks because like I said I want it to be a more natural look today skin wise obviously my eyes are not I liked the book as a kid I know I'm probably not gonna read it as an adult there's definitely some elements of it that are like mm, especially when they talk about India it's uh would not be allowed today would not be allowed today now going into my ColourPop Blue Moon palette to use that shade Moonlight. You know, I'm not used to finishing the synopsis of a book before I finish my makeup look. This is new. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is like legit the only light blue that I have 
in my entire collection. So anytime there's a light blue on any of the color the covers, you are definitely going to see me bringing this palette out. Feeling kind of like cotton candy right now. Now for the brown. Going to go into my Lorac Pro 3 palette. Is this Pro 3? This is Pro 3. And I'm going to go into that shade dark brown right there just to lightly line my eyes a little bit. Just pressing it uh, on and slightly above my lash line to get a very precise line that looks natural. There's that, and then I'm going to take any excess and put it on my lower lash line just a little bit, just to make my eyes seem a little whiter. I was thinking about starting a new YouTube video series of, you know, five best and five worst of specific brands, or, you know, how did you make up like the different Bond girls and the different Bond movies? That was my mom's idea, actually, that one. Would you guys be interested in that? Because I already started doing a lot of research on the Bond Girls thing last night. And then I stopped myself and I was like, would people even care about that? Would people even like that? And would you like more tutorial type stuff? Or do you... Do you like these series that I have? I appreciate any feedback and comments that you guys have to give me. All the time. I'm gonna put on some mascara and put on some lip gloss and close out this video. Okay, I just put the ColourPop Lippy Sticks in the shade Oh Snap on my lips and then put a little bit of the MAC Dazzle Glass in the shade Moth 2.0 oh. on top. Loving this new combination. I apologize for my dog. Hey you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed me talking about this book and making a look out of it. Oh, the dust was flying off of it. I hope you all have a wonderful day. I love you all. Bye! Mwah, 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 mwah.